The hatred for Black Myth Wukong is continuing unabated from social media posters and gaming journalists as they continue their campaign of destroying this game. And it just looks kind of suspicious to see every single gaming journalist magazine and popular poster of video game titles that are coming up trashing this game incessantly when this game is getting universal praise from the people that are actually playing the game itself that are not gaming journalists and i think this is the suspicious thing that we see within the games journalist industry where it's supporting the destruction of a game if it doesn't fall in line with its political decisions and its overall political progressive ideology and i think that's the thing that we're seeing with black myth wukong right now it's doing its own thing it's a game based in china produced by a developer from a chinese company called game Science that refused and rejected to be involved with the modern day political progressive politics that have invaded the video gaming space at least in the western world and i think that lack of involvement and submission to these ideals is leading to a coordinated attack against the developer itself game science as we see incessantly this trashing of the game from games journalists and we get a new interview with a new games journalist saying the same thing we've heard incessantly from other games journalists attacking the game for the similar points that have already been debunked delegitimized and already explained away with a logical reason and i think that's the thing where i see this as a coordinated attack against game science the developer and of course the game black myth wukong if you don't know anything about black myth wukong like i mentioned before it's a chinese game that's coming out on august 20th it's from the developer game science and they've been attacked from social media giants big game journalist magazines and websites for not being respectful to the to women for whatever reason this point has been aggrandized to the to the level where the, the people that are being asked this question from the developer are asking like what do you even talk about we don't know what you're even mentioning but they keep getting hammered by gaming journalist magazines about this point about not being respectful for women not having enough women in the game and it just makes no sense to even ask the games developer this question because it has nothing to do with the overall focus of the game and i think this is the where we're getting this manufacturing controversy around the game to, to deride it to ridicule it because it's not falling in line with the standards at least the political progressive standards that have been established in the video gaming industry and I think that is the point that people are having a lot of issue with nowadays when it comes to the video gaming industry when they put out these talking points when they put out these issues of contention with video games you're wondering is this a real issue or is this a political issue you can see this with the Guardian with their overall headline mentioning controversy when there is no controversy with the game there's something that has been manufactured from journalists for specific reasons that are more in line with its lack of paying money to different consultancy firms that are associated with these game journalist magazine and i think that is the extortion racket that we have been seeing in the video gaming industry instead of talking about the game instead of asking about the game they're talking about random controversies that don't actually exist and no one's even caring about and i think that's the situation with uh, the post from the author of the article where they're saying i recently played the beautiful satisfied black myth wukong a game with potential but instead of talking about the game he says that the interview was bizarre because they wouldn't answer his questions about a controversy that doesn't even exist if you know anything about the controversy it was built upon a mistranslation of some of their words in relation to the game itself where they thought it was like something that was battling against women empowerment or something related to that and their lack of women games developers when in actuality game science has numerous female game developers that are working on the game you can just see it here but half of the core developers are female developers and programmers so it makes no sense to say they're anti-women they're against women or anything like that because the core people working on it are female game developers and artists so it's just weird for them to have this attack when they're talking about a mistranslation of a title and they're continuing on with this perpetuation of this ideal that this game is somehow offensive when there is no offense there is nothing related to an offensive thing in the game itself because it's about japanese mythology something that has been established and you can see them ign going over this topic where it's saying there's alleged sexist comments from multiple developers at game science when in actuality it was a mistranslation of some of the words they said during an interview because the improper translator made it out into a bad comment that have nothing in line with what the game developers were trying to say and i think that's a essential 
thing that we're getting nowadays from games journalists where they're there to send a message and i think the message goes back to the sweet baby ink sweet baby ink was a consultancy firm that is known for its political progressive ideals and instilling them in the video gaming industry if you know anything about their track record they have worked on multiple titles in these past few years alan wake 2 kill the justice league god of war spider-man 2 a lot of titles that kind of have been tainted and besmirched because of their interactivity with the game kill the justice league is one of the worst producing games of the year falling off down to 239 regular steam players where it's just non-existent and it's a game that may bankrupt rock steady alan wake 2 is a semi-failure where it's not reaching sales potential spider-man 2 is barely reaching half of the sales of the first one and of course the biggest success from them is probably god of war 2 where it has the least involvement from them and i think that's the situation that we're seeing within the game industry where people are trying to take the advice of consultancy firms that are there mostly to instill their values in the gaming industry and with black myth wukong they approach game science the developer of black myth wukong with an offer of paying them seven million dollars in order to have their input into their video game and their input would be invariably adding gender racial issues into a mythological story about chinese historical legend and i think it makes no sense to have this consultancy firm working on your game because they have no idea of your culture they want to instill their culture into your eastern culture and i think that's the the dichotomy where yes the game science developers just looked at them like no we're not gonna pay you seven million dollars for this but of course sweet baby inc reportedly came back to them with multiple articles from ign and kotaku that appeared out of nowhere trashing their games about a mistranslation and it just goes back to how you see these games companies and these games journalists working together hand in hand to actually have a racket that is extorting games companies that do not bend to their will of course game science didn't bend to their will now you have over seven articles trashing their game and you just got another an eighth one from the guardian trashing their game for some comments that never existed for some mistranslated comments and i think that's the situation that has been developing in the game industry for a long time and now we're seeing it play out with black myth wukong where a game that is being heralded and, and championed by multiple gamers and streamers but it's constantly and consistently trashed online because it didn't pay the extortion fee and i think that is the result of all the online backlash that is coming at black myth wukong in game science because it is being attacked on all sides and it's all coming from gaming journalists that suspiciously have the same values the same moral standards as sweet baby ink and i think that's where i have to put out that comment that this is a, an attack from sweet baby ink that still continues on allegedly of course all of this is rumors nothing has been completely confirmed but i think we can see the, the makeup of how this business is being run nowadays within the gaming industry if you don't follow their rules if you don't pay the extortion fee you're gonna get a lot of bad press and that seems to be the case for black myth wukong it's getting a lot of bad press and it's not going away anytime soon even up till its release but of course if you just do things like other game studios make a good game for the gamers your game will be successful and of course you can use the first descendant as the best example of that getting mixed reviews overall from the gaming industry but still being a massive success and i think that's the essential thing black myth wukong and chinese developers need to do ignore the noise the gaming journalists or reviews just make the game you want to make and you'll be successful but that's just my thoughts on the situation i'd like to hear your thoughts on the situation like comment share subscribe this is wagner knows why catch you next time